不少人家人家人家人家人家人家人家人家人家人家人家人家人家人家人家人家人家人家人家人家人家人家人家人家人家人家人家人家人家人家人家人家人家人家人家人家人家人家人家人家人家人家人家人家人家人家人家人家人家
牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、牛奶、ビグトチ、ショブスセイナンカチグ、チョウイシャガー、ショウヤケダケディンカモヨ、ヤケサンマノコ、ノコワコウケン、ワタバコウケン、シャイチジコガサゼガンス。ショビクニョライナンカトゲンチシュソトモニョゼガンテツ、ヒトショウイナンゾシソシネレンボーカツゴオブツベンスゼンガンゼコニョライ。十一分実名に画面の無線難治、消防の来訪会に大勢移動中、上海実風格、非尿路一、栄創雑妙連法、約三十、十秒、五人、多少、四、三、百、十二、十内、四、百、十、EU、自演、音子、洋国と、少子、洋語、音多、とか、やけ、やか、発問、来年、年、入時、政治、五部、現在、聞け、少子、音とか、若し、長身、若夫、死者、よ、健康部、海大、歓喜、はい、キモンジンゼ、ゼンナンノンキガトグチゴボクドクヤギゲンゲンクヨキョチチュミョムケンチトクノニョゼ、エショキョボグコヤキソシキコミミンカイスチクソク、トシワゴヨシロボクニサゼガンチダイロヤキシキコミミンカイスチクソクニョトカボクチョクチョクノムブチュゲンゴショチチュフシシンジャ、ケンシーロー、ヤクシキゴー、グコー、サカベンブクチー、ビョー、ジンジョー、ユー、ヨシー、シンジャー、ケンゴー、ブーライス、ヤッカンギー、モンジンギュー、シャクジギュー、シャクジギュー、モンジンギュー、シャクジビョー、ネンヨーゴー、ヤクニーフーゴー、ブクソウィシャガー、ドッケイチンニュー、シッパンチンコー、オシーコー、シキコー、ヤクニーイプミー、ブーサーセネンシーシータ、カミン、イドクチョウチュー、シンカイテンドースイゲンガキグシャクリョニョゼイコヤキニフーゴブクガコントトトトベン、リョウブクシーヤキソクジャジェ、ソクザジェゼゴン、ニョトトチガコンスイロチジイジゼコロヤキコンウサイシニョンカチュブクモツフーサイザゼキョイブシータククケンシーゲンゴニョブウイジゼジショジ、マンブーハイソーシンダイウノニサセネンヤカブジャジャジミンガドグノケンクゴコンザシャガオンソータコクジユイコロムブジコジョイヒガンチンチョイチョゴナイチチヤクチキゴミミサクシューブクシータクビオカユゴブマンチシチタクタイジンメナイキゲンチゲンチソーセンナンチオウィウンガスハウニーのセシロウィコモザイフホチャセサンブツゴンガヤクニョゼジョブツウィライムヨムヘンヤクサンマナクナユタアソギコイシュジョコイホベンレイクワントメツロヤクムウニョニョホセツガコモカシャニジセソンヨクジュウセンツキニセツケゴンジガタコブライチョコチョコチョムリョハクセンバナクサヤソギジョセボギョギムシュウクジュウジョロニュー、オブトロニー、ライムヨーカウィー、ロジュジョーコー、ホーベンゲンネーハニー、ジトフーメトロジョジューシーサーポーカー、ジョジューオーチー、イチョウチンドゥーレキローテンドーツーソン、スイガニーブーケンシューケンガーメストロコークヨーサーリーケンガーエレモニーショーカテゴーシンチューョーキーチンバクチキチキイノーナン、イシンヨーケンボトフーチー、ジャケジミョージーガーグースーソーカーセトロジューセンガージーゴーチューゾーゾーザイチーブーメトウィーホーベンリーコー、ゲヌメツプーメツヨコクフシュジョクギョシンギョチャガブオヒチュイセツムジョホニョトフマンチタニガメツロガケンチョチュゾモツザヨクガイコフウィキンチンロゴショケツゴウインゴシンネンボナイシツウィセポチンズウレキニョセイオワソギコチョサイロチュゼンギュヨチョチュジョタイカショショジカシドアノンテニジョジュマノニチョドカクジュジュオチョガンホジュタケガチュジョジュウラク
小天逆天狗，上山修行，高空曼达拉，给三百的狗带修，高照到附近，你修行修行，你不照顾那鸟在自居满，遵守三修，周一阿哥高一年卡，手提个，富满三宝庙，小猪哭，叫个牛娃，十七只小手开，应该心在心。在寻觅，在破瓦克吉，一起修，三只不知怎么要苦，哪一天不晒，一三只不知难吉。该吉那个鸟在，高烧，哎高烧，莫要九秒，莫修高，苦修高烧，将个鸟头乌鸡叫。莫头鸡叫，给头大鸟要进，不知高鸡破高鸟，一身好白泥鸡，要起高子自来泥干起。莫恼谁可莫改，也可为谁不苦，愁苦更下一帮不天道，只是在你个没注意就更加个，你小口细心，好一次再个个，要个大哦，阿个多就个着急，就就要到富家多，只有抽卡多，一生就就好买起啥才能，一家就就就，他个牛木就多，啥个就就不行，那。妙好人个巧男，妙好人个巧男，妙好人个巧男么妙好人个巧男么妙好人个巧男么。
Thank you, thank you very much. Wow. The uh, humidity is playing or wreaking havoc with my throat, it would seem. No matter, uh, before we continue on to uh, Shodai in the new year, uh, I wanted to read some Go Show to close this year of 2020 with uh, some study and some inspiration from uh, Nitrin and open the new year with the same kind of resolve so that in 2021 all of us hunker down and find deeper more profound depths to our practice our conviction and our confidence um, and for me, um, as a human being, it all begins with study. So, this, uh, this Go Show is titled, On the Buddha's Prophecy. And so, <clears throat> Nietzsche is going to have a bit of a uh, story to lay out here. And then he's going to go into his question and answer period. And this Go Show really centers around uh, Nietzsche's justification for his place in the scholarship of Buddhism. Uh, how does he claim it? Why does he claim it? Um, and his question and answers, um, they include everybody. They, he's, I know he's making these questions up to, for himself to answer, but... Uh, he doesn't take it easy on himself. So here we go. The heading on this is composed by the Shramana of Nichiren. Or it's Shramana Nichiren. So he is the teacher. And here he goes. The seventh volume of the Lotus Sutra states, quote, After I have passed into extinction, in the last 500 year period, you must spread it the Lotus Sutra, abroad, widely, throughout Jampudvipa, and never allow it to be cut off, end quote. Now, Jampudvipa is used in a lot of ways uh, predating Buddhism. Uh, Hinduism and Brahmanism and uh, Jainism, they, they all borrow this concept of the cosmology. It's not really cosmology, it's more the, hmm, shall I call it the geography? In a way, they're all mixed together in these ancient um, thought experiments. But Jampudvipa, um, for the purposes of our discussion, is basically the human inhabited world. Uh, Jampudvipa has many meanings, continent, island. There are other con uh, continents around it, but uh, they only re relate to Jampudvipa from the standpoint of other influences. Jampudvipa, for our purposes, is generally all of humanity. 
So I know it can be confusing because it sounds like it means different things at different times. On the one hand, Nitrin continues, it is deplorable to me that more than 2,200 years, 2,220 years have already passed since the Buddha's demise. What evil karma prevented me from being born in his lifetime? So really, he's just complaining that he didn't get to practice with the author of these teachings. It's just the nature of his relationship with Buddha. Uh, why could not I have seen the four ranks of sages in the former day of the law, or Tendai and Dengyo in the middle day of the law? He's gained great appreciations for these teachers, right? To the point where he wishes he could have been by their side. On the other hand, he says, I rejoice at whatever good fortune enabled me to be born in the last 500 year period and to read these true words of the Sutra. Not only because they were available to him to read, but because he had the capacity to understand them. He goes on, even if I'd been born in the Buddha's lifetime, it would have, been, have served no purpose. For those who embraced the four flavors of teachings had not yet heard of the Lotus Sutra. Again, my being born in either the former or the middle day of the law would have been meaningless. For neither the scholars of the three schools of the south or the seventh school, seven schools of the north in China, nor those of the flower garland and the true page turning karma. <laughs> Uh, true word or any other sect, schools believed in the Lotus Sutra. The great teacher Tendai states, quote, in the last 500 year period, the wonderful and difficult to understand way will spread and benefit humankind far into the future. End quote. Does this not describe the time of wide propagation? The great teacher Dengyo says, quote, the former and middle days are almost over and the latter day is near at hand, end quote. These words revealed how much he longed for the beginning of the latter day of the law. If we consider the rewards of living in the different ages, it is clear that minds surpass those of Nagarjuna and Vasubandhu and excel those of Tendai and Dengyo. So stri strictly speaking, what he's talking about here is the Lotus Sutra's unique position in the ultimate teaching that Buddhahood is, is always at hand. It is inherent in the life process. And all that we need do is um, penetrate our veils of de delusions to see it because it's already there. Uh, this is this is amazing, right? So now we start the question and answer period. Question. You're not the only person living in this last 500 year period. Why are you in particular so overjoyed to be living now? <laughs> uh, any of you parents out there probably recognize a teenager in the making in this question. Uh, what makes you so special? <laughs> <laughs> right. I laugh twice because of the way it sounds, but also because this is Nietzsche asking himself this question. So, answer. The fourth volume of the Lotus Sutra reads, quote, Since hatred and jealousy toward this sutra abound, even when the thus come one is in the world, how much more will it, this be so after his passing? Also, the great teacher Tendai states, quote, it will be much worse in the future because the principles of the Lotus Sutra are so hard to teach, end quote. The great teacher Miao Lo explains, quote, the purpose of the phrase, the principles are so hard to teach, is to let us know how hard it is to enable people to understand these principles. The Dharma teacher Chit Tu states, quote, it is said that good medicine tastes bitter. This sutra, which is like good medicine, dispels attachments to the five vehicles and establishes the one ultimate principle. It reproaches those in the ranks of ordinary beings and censures those in the ranks of sagehood 
denies provisional Mahayana and refutes, sorry, refutes Hinayana. That is why all these types of people try to make hindrances for a practitioner of the, of the Lotus Sutra. End quote. The great teacher Dengyo states, quote, Speaking of the age, the propagation of the true teaching will begin in the age when the middle day of the law ends and the latter day opens. Regarding the land, it will begin in a land to the east of Tang and to the west of Katsu. As for the people, it will spread among people stained by the five impurities who live in a time of conflict. The sutra state says, quote, Since hatred and jealousy toward this sutra abound even when the dust come one is in the world, how much more will this be so after his passing? End quote. There is good reason for this statement. End quote. The great teacher Dengyo seems to be describing his own day, but actually he's referring to our present time. His words, quote, the former and middle days are almost over and the latter day is near at hand, end quote, have just such a meaning. And uh, a quick uh, look around the world today, uh, it's easy to see how these teachings relate to our time. You can't look anywhere without seeing conflict, even within ourselves. The Sutra states, the lotus quote evil devils the devils is people heavenly beings dragons yakshas kumbanda demons and others will seize the advantage as we already know these are all personages representing states of mind and influences and all of these attachments will influence us deeply there's the first level of conduct, uh, conflict right there. Another part of the sutra details these others, whether, quote, whether it be a yaksha or a rakshasa, or a hungry spirit or a putana, or a kritya, or a vetada, or a skanda, or an umaraka, or an apasamaraka, or a yaksha kritya, or a human kritya, and so on. These passages explain that those who in previous lifetimes embraced the four flavors and the three teachings, non-Buddhist teachings, or doctrines concerning the realms of human and heavenly beings appear in this life as devils or heavenly or human beings who persecute the votary of the true and perfect teaching when they see or hear of him. It's all because of animality, hung, jealousy, those kind of things, right? So I'm not sure he directly answered the question, but he's using the sutras to indicate that who else could it be? Everybody's pointed this direction to me, right? So the next question is, in comparing the former and middle days with the latter day of the law, the first two were far superior in terms of both time and the people's capacity. Why are these factors of time and capacity ignored in the Lotus Sutra, which ref refers exclusively to this age? Answer. The Buddha's intent is difficult to fathom. Indeed, I am unable to grasp it. We may attempt to understand, however, by taking the Hinayana Sutras as a point of reference. During the thousand years of the former day of the law, Hinayana was fully endowed with the three elements of teaching, practice, and proof. So you practice your meditations, you studied to deepen your understanding, and you could witness in your life the, the logic and the truth of what you were practicing and what you were studying you could see it every day that it was uh, it agreed with observation during the thousand years of the middle day teaching and practice alone remained proof no longer existed in other words during the middle day as people's capacities were changing they started to develop more doubt 
And so they would practice as a form of ritual. They would study as a form of memorization, but they would fail to see whether either the practice or the teachings manifesting itself in their lives. They were just blind to it. They wouldn't see the proof. They would just do everything out of uh, dedication, which is laudable as well, but there should be proof. In the latter day of the law, teaching alone remains. People will have scholarship and study, but they, they're lackadaisical in their practice. And so the proof doesn't manifest. They're just fascinated by the teachings and they can share them and mimetically and claim they understand better than another. And blah, blah, blah. It's all about the, the written word and the teachings rather than actualizing those things. That was an interesting distraction. <laughs> okay. So he goes on. In the latter day of the law, teaching alone remains. Neither practice nor proof exist. On examining this from the standpoint of the Lotus Sutra, we find that in the thousand years of the former day of the law, persons who possessed all three had most probably formed ties with the Lotus Sutra during the Buddha's lifetime. That's a... Uh, a that's a rhetorical way of saying that these people were closer to understanding their own enlightenment, not that they actually time traveled. They were born again in the former day when they were able to obtain the proof of Hinayana through its teachings and practice, not because of the value of the Hinayana so much, but because of their insight, their ability to take that teaching and actualize it. Those born in the middle day had not developed strong ties to the Lotus Sutra during the Buddha's lifetime and were therefore unable to attain proof through Hinayana. So the teachings of Hinayana weren't, they weren't, um, they didn't develop a depth of understanding that the people of that time needed in order to transcend their human delusions. They turned instead to provisional Mahayana, they knew Hinayana wasn't working. Provisional Mahayana seemed to have more meat in it, more understanding for their now greater capacity to understand. And thus were able to be born in the pure lands of the Ten Directions. That alone was able to ease their burden and move them to, toward their Buddhahood. In the latter day of the law, no benefit is derived from either Mahayana or Hinayana. Now he's talking about provisional Mahayana, right? Today we understand neuroplasticity, how the mind works, how the brain works, all of that. So all of those wonderful teachings uh, from uh, the perfection of mind, diamond, heart, all of that, um, great teachings. But what happens? We get attached to that validation of our human form. We get attached to the scholarship of understanding the mind rather than using it to transcend it. So Hinayana retains nothing but its teaching. It has neither practice nor proof. Mahayana still has its teaching and practice, but no longer provides any proof of benefit, either conspicuous or inconspicuous. It just becomes uh, intellectual ritual. Furthermore, the schools of Hinayana and provisional Mahayana established during the former and middle days of the law cling all the more stubbornly to their doctrines as they enter the latter day. So as usually is the case, the, the smarter people get, the less they're open to change. Isn't that a contradictory thing? But we see it in everything, right? Those who espouse Hinayana reject Mahayana. And those who espouse provisional teachings attack the true teachings. And what do you, you think you're better than us? Until the country is overrun with slanderers of the law. They're slanderers and they don't even know it because they refuse to stay open-minded so that they can see what all of these teachings they're practicing lead to. What is the ultimate point of all of it? Uh, I don't want to hear it. This is the ultimate point. This is what I'm doing. Right? Those who fall into the evil paths because of their mistaken practice of Buddhism outnumber the dust particles of the land, while those who attain the Buddha way 
by practicing the correct teaching are fewer than the specks of dirt that can be placed on a fingernail. At such a time, the heavenly gods and benevolent deities abandon the country, and only perverse heavenly beings and perverse demons remain, possessing the minds and bodies of the ruler, his subjects, and monks and nuns, and causing them to curse, revile, and heap shame on the votary of the Lotus Sutra. So now this is coming closer to the argument you usually hear from Nietzschean. You see, this is the condition of our country right now. This is what we have in here. And these people revile the truth sayer, the one who understands the ultimate teaching and wants to offer to them this teaching, but they refute it because they think they're superior. If, however, in the time after the Buddha's passing, a person renounces his attachments to the four flavors and three teachings and converts to resolute mind and conviction in the Lotus Sutra that is true Mahayana, the heavenly gods and benevolent deities, as well as the bodhisattvas, numerous as the dust particles of the thousand worlds who emerge from beneath the ground, guess who, will protect him as a votary of the Lotus Sutra. Under their protection, he will establish and spread abroad widely throughout Jampudvipa the object of devotion of the essential teaching or the five characters of Myoho Renge Kyo. Yes, Nichiren, <laughs> we understand. It was the same with Bodhisattva Never Disparaging, who lived in the middle day of the law of the Buddha, awesome sound king. He propagated widely throughout his land the teaching of the 24 characters that begin with, I have profound reverence for you, so on and so forth, and was attacked with sticks of wood and the whole by the whole population. The 24 characters of Never Disparaging and the five characters of Nichiren are different in wording, but accord with the same principle. The end of the Buddha, Awesome Sound King's middle day, and the beginning of the latter day of the law are exactly the same in method of conversion. Bodhisattva Never Disparaging was a practitioner at the initial stage of rejoicing. Nichiren is an ordinary practitioner at the stage of hearing the name and words of the truth. Now we go on to the next question, but I think for our New Year's lesson, or Gongyo, this is a good place to stop. Because one of the things we, we, we tend to do at the end of a year as we begin a new one, it's just another day, it's just another day, but we humans put significance to things like this. And because the significance of a new year is closing a previous chunk of time and all the accomplishments and struggles that we had in that time and ushering in a new time of challenges with positive energy to say we're up to the task. We make the same vow that Nietzsche made. So without planning it, this was an excellent go show uh, to use in our transition here from one year to the next. Um, and uh, I think, yeah, I think I will end this New Year's Gangyo here and immediately go into Shodai so that those of you who'd like to stay on and, and join me for some Daimoku as we transition into the new year. Um, we'll just make, yeah, maybe I should do that now. I'll start that now and uh, we'll progress to another video uh, later. But thank you for participating. Be thankful and grateful and admire your own efforts for the past year. No matter how many struggles, no matter what you've been through, you've surmounted them. You're here. And if you're in the midst of struggles now, I assure you, your track record makes certain that with study and practice, you will most certainly overcome. And the, the next year will be full of more challenges, but you will continue to grow surmount challenges and accomplish your Buddha nature and see the world as a wonderful, beautiful experience. So good for you. Namo myoho renge kyo. 
And now I'm going to turn my back to you. Sorry. But I will face Gohansen, as I invite you to do. And we'll start to chant again. Maybe my voice will hold up uh, better than it has so far. Um, I'm encouraged. <laughs> Congratulations. Namo myoho renge kyo. Namo 
Namo myo ho denge go 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 Please continue to chant. I have to get something to soothe my throat. I will leave the, the Gonzan up for a little while.
なもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょうなもんよほうれんげいきょう
Namu myoho renge kyo 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 namu